Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I am Joanna Brandy, and I am here with Janice Francisco today, and we have a rip-roaring web webinar for you today. <laughs> to talk about what science can teach you about keeping your glass half full. You may notice that we're laughing at this. We've had a lot of laughs putting this together. Uh, and I am finding that that right now, it seems to be the best medicine uh, to keep a sense of humor about things. Because if we go in the other direction, we're sunk. So let's keep a sense of humor as we go through this today and a sense of lightness. That's why uh, Janice chose this, you know, fabulous little picture of baby Einstein. <laughs> And I wonder what baby Einstein would think about everything that's going on now. So here we go. The problem is things have and are changing. We're sense making through the ambigu amb ambiguity and the uncertainty that's happening right now. And what we think and how we think really matters. So our intention today is to help ground you, expand you, and help you face the future with more faith in your strengths. So let's take a poll. Yes. We, uh, let's see, we did not have, we had some technical difficulties, so we did not have time. Okay, Joanna. Can do that. Can you do it from there, Janice? I can. I'm oh, going to launch the poll, and wonderful. this will this will give everybody a couple of things to do as we get started. So yeah. I think we've got three poll questions for you, yeah. folks, and we're... We're polling those of you who are there as you come on, if you want to answer those. Okay, so I'm sharing the results, hopefully, with all of you. Can people see this? Okay, so what emotions have you experienced in the past two days? Um, you know what? This is fantastic. Look at the range of emotions. And I think really that's the, that's the message with this. What we were hoping to show you is that the people who are here and likely the p other people in your life, we're all experiencing a range of emotions. And as you'll see in what we're talking about today, that whole concept of gratitude uh, as a positive thinking practice is definitely something that's going to be helpful for you. Um, and let's see if we can give you some tools to help release some of that anxiety that you're feeling mm -hmm. and obviously the vulnerability that's there too. Um, if there's anything that's striking me in the conversations I'm having with people, over the last uh, week or two, it's that I think we're all starting to get much more connected with our humanity. And uh, yeah. there's nothing like a shared experience to get people to understand the empathy and compassion that we need for each other. Um, I'm going to now move to the second question. It says, which of these self-care needs are you meeting for, uh, meeting for yourself? I think this, again, is fantastic. I was reading a really interesting article this morning about how important it is to maintain even a small amount a bit of exercise, you know, 30 minutes or so, three times a week, moderate exercise in these kinds of times. So things to do your, your well-being. And they were even saying, if you're feeling tired and run down, that's not the time to be exercising. It's really the time to be making more priorities on taking care of yourself that way. Um, Obviously, with the importance of Zoom, everybody wants to have a hell of a lot more connection these days. We're seeing that through all of these online tools available. Um, and it's nice to see people are playing. I think we have to find some ways to play in all of this. So look at that. Um, and then our third one, well, hey, that's good. Looks like the majority of us have six to 10 roles in reserve and others of us are in different ways and you know, that's okay. it. So, all right, how about we move on? Um, I'm gonna yeah. stop sharing the poll now and uh, we'll go from there. Wonderful. And I think I can get out of there. Okay, why don't I take from here, Joanna? I, yeah, there's a couple slides here that are yours yep. and then I'll take it over from there. Perfect. Okay, so if you look at uh, what we're attempting to do today, uh, when Joanna and I came together, we were both tired of seeing all of the emails that came out with beautiful corporate speak that said, here's all the things we're doing to keep you safe in, uh, in this COVID crisis. And we both had this real need to go, you know, people are going through much more than just that. What is it that we can do? What can we help people with, um, you know, through this time and give them something other than a we're all at home working and, you know, all of these crazy things we have to be worrying about. We know that. And really the big concept of what we're looking at today is a healthy mind and a healthy body. And if you look at some of the information that we're going to be sharing with you today, 
um, the whole concept that we are in right now is worrying about or cons being concerned about keeping our immune systems well. Mm -hmm. And the bridge to being able to do that is monitoring what we're thinking and how we're feeling in our bodies, uh, thinking positively, using creativity to make sure that we're keeping our immune systems up and, and doing all of the right things to keep that, uh, increase our odds of staying healthy through this. Or even just moving through it faster if we have to, if we have to take one for that virus. Um, so here's where we're going today. Um, we're going to start off with some content. Uh, we were doing a run through and Joanna had us absolutely captivated earlier this week as we were going through. I hope you find the same experience. So first thing we'll do is look at uh, your immune system and, and talk about how that follows your lead. So this is all about how are you leading yourself? How are you leading other people around you with the attitudes and the, the thinking that you're using? Uh, next, we'll move into why is it that you need to be paying a little bit more attention to creative thinking? And we'll summarize up a lot of what we've been talking about using this thing called the B attitudes. Uh, third, we're going to move into some tools. We've pulled together a couple of tools for you uh, to help lift your emotions. Joanna's going to talk about, you know, how do we get out of those survival emotions? Um, and then we'll expect to have a little bit of time to do some Q&A at the end. We've got uh, people monitoring that box and we will uh, do our best in the time that's left to answer them. Next slide, Joanna. Okay, so let me introduce myself. I'm Joanna Brandy. I'm a certified chief happiness officer and I have 30 years of expertise in creating happy customers, happy employees and happy bottom lines. And I offer workshops, webinars, consulting and online learning. Janice. And I'm Janice Francisco. My company is Bridgepoint Effect. We are based in Toronto and we're working globally now. Um, it seems, you know, it's very timely, all of this, and the reality is what we've observed is leading teams uh, through very challenging situations can be paralyzing for leaders, particularly when uh, often it's perceived that they're the ones that are expected to have all the answers. And one of the things that we've learned over the years that we've done the work that we do is that the best teams or, or companies start to be much more successful when they find ways to bring their teams together to solve problems. And so we have a framework that helps leaders and their teams know what to do when they don't know what to do and get themselves out of those binds. And really our focus is on helping leaders become that re respected leader that has a team that knows how to get things done, even in very challenging circumstances. And thank you for joining us today, because this added your, your participating in this has added such a, a new spin to it. I love it because we're we're, we're got to figure out what to do with this creativity. You know, we think 60,000 thoughts a day, but here's the kicker. 90% of the thoughts we think today are the same thoughts we think thought yesterday, and 80% of those are negative. Now, that's in normal circumstances. So imagine what percentage of those thoughts that are running around in our mind, sometimes below the surface, are negative today because of the situation, and that certainly can cause a problem because your body hears everything you say and it reacts to everything you think. The thoughts you think make up the stories you tell about yourself, the world, and others. And they in turn become the dramas that you play out in your life, so that thinking is very important. The most important story you tell is the, is the story you tell yourself. Now years ago, uh, when I studied happiness, I studied with Dr. Martin Seligman, who wrote the book, learned optimism. And what I learned from him is that there are two explanatory styles. And as Winston Churchill said, the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, but the optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. And I'd say we probably have a lot of optimists. What do you think, Janice? We have a lot of optimists for this today. <laughs> with people who are doing gratitude practice, I yeah, think so. <laughs> I'd say so. But just a quick run through on this. Pessimists, when faced with a negative circumstance, they think in terms that this is permanent, that this is pervasive, that it's never gonna change. An optimist on the other hand says, you know what, this is temporary, we're gonna get through it, and it's very specific. So there is, a, there is a difference. And there's a difference in outcome because optimists live with hope, faith, and joy. They're healthier, more creative, and more open to possibility. They have more fun, they also have lower blood pressure, lower cortisol, and fewer heart attacks. And they tend to live seven to nine years longer. I love that part. So the question is, 
are we tending towards one or the other? Are we moving towards being a victim or moving towards being victorious? And how you interpret a situation has everything to do with how your body responds to it. So if you're dramatizing, catastrophizing, and awfulizing and disasterizing, it's going to take a bigger toll on your body. And while in the very first days of this challenge that we have in front of us right now. I think a whole lot of us went to catastrophizing and awfulizing, but now that things are starting to level out and we can see there's going to be a long trajectory on this, we can begin to shift the way we're thinking about it. Quick biology lesson. Our brain has three layers and they form at different times when we're in the womb. So first thing to form is the reptilian brain. That's the same one that the crocodiles have. And that's all about self-preservation. That's your reptilian brain. Then there's the midbrain. That's the mammalian brain. And that's the home of emotion and memory. But then there's the higher brain function. That's really what we're talking about today. The higher brain function, the neocortex, the crowning glory of human beings. And that's where we can choose the story we tell about anything. If we're not careful though, our amygdala gets hijacked and that then impacts decision-making. So if you're checking the news five or six times a day, you're probably in some form of amygdala hijack. Back off on the news a little bit, find one or two reliable sources and stay away from it because just watching the news will lower your immune system. And when your um, amygdala gets hijacked, it impacts your ability to see the whole picture and come up with the creative solutions. And you may miss some of that intuitive information as your brain narrows to see what's wrong in the environment instead of what's right. We're just hardwired for hard times. So we have a stimulus and then a reaction. And when that reaction, which we know is the fight, flight, or freeze reaction kicks off, the body begins producing all these stress chemicals and shut down the non-essential systems. When we experience even five minutes of anger and hold onto, I should say for longer than five minutes, our immune system shuts down for six to eight hours. So you can imagine the impact that the, the current news cycle is having on our immune system if we don't uh, take it in small bits. So here's a positivity practice for you. That's one of the things I do is create positivity practices. Think about upgrading your explanatory style. I myself am a recovering pessimist. Now people find that hard to believe because I'm a happiness coach and a happiness officer, but I, I will go to the negative, but because I've trained my brain, I switch quickly over to the positive. I don't actually go directly to the positive. So that's because I genetically wasn't born happy because there's a genetic component. So take a look at how you're explaining the world to yourself. Become the witness here and pay attention and see how you're explaining things to identify whether you're explaining it through an optimistic or a pessimistic lens. Important to look at the optimistic lens because when we experience positive emotions, it makes us smarter. When we are in the presence of a positive emotion, the right hemisphere of the brain and the left hemisphere of the brain begin communicating better so we can see the big picture. In fact, our peripheral vision actually physically expands when we're in, in the throes of a positive emotion. Positive emotions make us healthier and build those T cells, which are so much, uh, has so much to do with a strong immune session. Uh, <laughs> I'm going too fast, a strong immune response. Positive emotions make us more socially adept, so we're able better to deal with other people with compassion. Positive emotions, we now have evidence, also make us wealthier, probably because we're so good at dealing with other people. And we're more likely to achieve the upper levels of our potential when we're experiencing those positive emotions. It turns out that the human body actually works best when it's positive five times more than negative. Now there's something to work towards. So happiness or positivity is a choice. It's a process, not a place. I like to call it a practice. It's a good habit. It's a skill that can be learned. Lots of people have learned it, like me, and practiced. It's, for me, a work ethic. It's a choice that actually physically changes your brain. <clears throat> it's a muscle that you can exercise. So if you want to build it, you got to practice it. It doesn't just feel good. It's good for you. And if you're in the business world, hey, it's a great business strategy. And the reason I use the word happiness and positivity together is that some people actually don't like the word happiness because their association with it is that there's a little smile, yellow smiley face somewhere. So if happiness is one of those words that you don't enjoy using, that's okay. Positivity is a great word too. So it's important at times like this to know your brain. Now this is not brain surgery 
and it's not rocket, rocket science, but it is brain science. So our job is to outsmart the primitive impulses. Here's a brain secret. The brain can't tell the difference between something that's real and something that's vividly imagined. So you can put your state itself in a state of joy or ease or happiness or peace when you want. This is a great use of that executive function of the brain. Now remember, it, it's not just the positive side of this. If you can vividly imagine a negative outcome, you're gonna be reacting to that even if it's not something that can happen. So be careful how you use that brain because negative emotions can be very toxic. And when we're in a negative emotion, our breathing slows down and gets real shallow. It tends to sit up here. And all we can see is what's wrong. Of course, our blood pressure goes up and our immune, fiction, immune function goes down and so do our digestive functions. And our sleep usually is affected by this. And most people right now are having a little challenge with their sleep because what they're not processing during, excuse me, the day, they may be processing at night. So we're gonna watch out for those negative emotions. The good news is positivity and negativity cannot be present at the same time because they take place in a different place of the brain. In the left prefrontal cortex is where we feel our positive feelings. So I have a tendency, to, the cue for me is I say, turn left. That means get over to the other side of your brain, girl, because you can't be in both places at the same time. And I do that by hitting the pause button. So the positivity practice I teach about this is called the power pause. Ah, set a timer for two or three minutes if you can. Close the door, close your eyes, and take three conscious breaths. If you take nothing else away from this, take those three conscious breaths away from that. And when you take those breaths, hold your hand on your heart, just like you were doing the Pledge of Allegiance and it calms down your central nervous system because when you put your hand on your heart, you are starting the flow of oxytocin in the body. And oxytocin is the tend and befriend chemical. And then when you get to this place, you can ask yourself, how am I feeling? Am I in alignment with my purpose and what I wanna be accomplishing? And if the answer is no, it's a good time to ask, how would I rather be feeling? What's the easiest, most useful way to get there? What can I focus on that will elevate my mood? And boy, this is surely a time for us to understand the things that help elevate our mood. So you can choose a different response in that place. You can choose peace or joy or harmony, any thought that makes you feel better. I choose happiness or I choose to be creative here. You can train your brain to be positive because neurons that fire together, wire together. So the more you spark those neurons, the more they wire together and form a neural pathway, like a highway, like a super highway, so that when you're faced with adversity, you can get to the positive emotion quicker. Here's a sure way to practice that. Do an appreciation audit. Three to five times during the day, stop what you're doing. Think about and write down three to five things that you're appreciating and of course, breathe deeply from your heart as you do that. And then let those feelings spread in your body. You're training your body to be in a state of gratitude and appreciation. Sounds like many of you are already there. This is a chart that comes from HeartMath out in California who I've, where I've studied. And the, the vibe of appreciation is kind of an even si uh, sine wave there. But when we're in a state of frustration, it's really jaggedy. So we can, just by focusing on our heart, any positive thought, something we appreciate and care about, we can actually change the heart rate variability to that much smoother uh, vibe there. And I have a little device that I put on my ear and I breathe with one of their tools and make that work so I can see myself do it. So the advice here is don't believe everything you think because every time you have a thought or a feeling, you make a chemical. And the thoughts of goodness create the chemicals of calm, which turn on the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your natural healing mechanism. And the thoughts of negativity create chemicals of fear, turns on that sympathetic nervous system, which is also known as the fight or flight response. But as human beings, we love to tell stories. So our internal stories are what spiral us up or down. So if we're speaking the good stuff, if we're talking the gratitude, we're going up. And if we're worried about the doomsday scenarios, we are spiraling down. So we have to think 
are we actually thinking or are we having thoughts? Da Dr. Daniel Amen says we have these automatic negative thoughts. And when these automatic negative thoughts play like an old movie in our head, they stimulate the areas of the brain that are responsive for depression and anxiety. Now, we do not need to uh, do anything to, uh, to encourage that these days. That's happening. <laughs> That's happening all on its own. So what <laughs> thoughts have you? Not what thoughts are you thinking, but what thoughts have you? And what thoughts are trapped in your mind? Don't believe everything you think. So challenge your story when you've got a thought that's going over and over again. When you hear yourself dramatizing or disasterizing or having a pity party with someone else, stop and start asking, are these things true? Am I ruminating? Because that's going to put you down into the rabbit hole. What can I change here? Surface the belief that's running the story and then challenge, change your story. Pay attention. Begin to notice what you notice. This is one of the first things I teach positive leaders. Notice what you notice. Follow where your attention goes. Now notice it without judging or without resisting it. Just notice with a sense of curiosity and compassion. You see, you can't change the things that you're unaware of. So noticing brings that awareness and that possibility of something new. Janice, why don't you take it from here? I will. And I'm going to spin off of what you were talking about in the aspect of, you know, we can make some choices here. And when we're noticing what we're noticing and we're, you know, we can make the choice to move into creativity. And in the same way that Joanna has said, hey, we can learn to be positive, we can actually learn to be creative. So I'm going to start with a couple of really basic things around creativity, just so we can ground you in, in this and then move you to another part. So the fact is, over the last week, or two, wherever you, your company, your family, or your country is in dealing with this crisis, you have had to dip into creativity that you may not have realized that you had. So the creativity we're talking about is creativity and thinking. We're talking about how are you thinking and what can you do differently because you think differently. So, you know, when we're faced with a crisis, there's two ways we can look at it. And if you look at that word creative, it also can be a word, the same letter, spell reactive. So the choice is, do you want to be in react mode where you're going to keep yourself in survival, drawing on all of those survival emotions, or do you want to move into creative mode and tap those higher level emotions of positivity that will actually allow you to create a new reality? Okay, so we have a little thing we use, of course, it's in our office, it's not in my home, but we actually have little gators that we use in our training. And there is, they're little reminders to people that we actively need to shift from that gator brain response when we're, we find ourselves in a place that is not resourceful and isn't helping us create something new, we have to make that choice. Now, the reality is we are hardwired to keep ourselves safe and to make sure that we're looking for danger. And everything that looks different is going to be perceived as a danger to us. And we have to take that pause practice, as Joanna says, and make sure that we're recognizing that we're seeing the danger, but what is the opportunity, okay? And that's the physical switch we need to make. So when I talk about creativity, there's many ways that we can look at how creativity is defined. I've studied it for a a lot of years, <laughs> and how people apply it. And here's the simplest definition that I have. If you want to think about your own creativity right now as doing something new and different that adds value. So new and different when you realize there's few things left in the fridge and you've got to somehow get dinner on the table with your, for your family, that's creative. Uh, finding a new way to work when you've been sent home and you haven't been an expert in doing virtual meetings and now you are like, you're a superhero when it comes to that. That's new and different. So it's, and it's really, what's the value? You're doing something for a productive and a positive outcome and it's helping you in that particular moment. So think about creativity from that aspect. Joanna, next. Now, one of the things I like to say to people is, you know, there's this perception that there's only certain people who are anointed and creative. But if we really are looking at creativity from the standpoint of how we think, these are what creative people do. 
these are the sorts of behaviors or these are the attitudes that you see in people who are truly creative. And my bet is if you look at any of those on that list, you can see yourself in this right now maybe in a different way than you had before. And these are the sorts of things that we have to, to look at. Now, middle row, bottom, self-aware. Joanna was saying, we've got to be able to take that pause and check in with ourselves so that we are noticing what we're noticing and we can actually give ourselves other choices. You cannot switch from gator brain to the higher level neocortex that you need to do your creative thinking if, if you're stuck down there. And the only way you're getting there is to recognize it, deal with the emotions that you're experiencing at that time, take a deep breath, put on your, put on your big pants and like go up there to that next part. <laughs> so, you know what they say, right? Put on your big girl pants or your big, big boy pants. pants, right? Okay, next one. A couple of other things that we have to do. If we look at a creative mindset, right? What we are, you know, I always talk to people and I say, you know what, you got to shift from what you think is impossible and look for what's possible. And that's the focus. And every moment something changes in our life, every time we get a new piece of news, every time we find out that the, the parameters around which they're asking us to hunker down in this crisis, there's always going to be something where we're gonna go, how the heck, right? But the reality is we need to just deal with that reality and we need to focus on what's possible in this particular moment, given the resources that we have. And that's what's going to make it possible and attainable, sustainable, all of those things for us. So one of the biggest things you can do going forward is keep open to possibilities. Recognize that in everything, as pat as it may sound, there is a silver lining. There is something else out there. And the way to trigger that is simply by asking yourself, what's possible? What if I did this? What would happen if that? Um, how else can I do that, right? Um, how might I do something or how might I use something else to get this done? You know, all of a sudden we're all using technology in ways that we never thought we would. And I bet many of you have shied away from even trying to use it because there was so many good excuses about why you shouldn't bother learning. Now we have to. Now we're seeing the value in learning and doing that differently. So those are all good places. Something I, else that's, sorry, Joanna? No, I, I, my favorite expression is what else is possible? Right. I say that a lot, actually. That's right. <laughs> okay, that possible? didn't work. What can we do now? Yeah. <laughs> so another one, playfulness. You know, um, it's, it's really about looking at those options that we have, toying with ideas and going us alongside that is what we call avoiding premature closure. And you know, when we're in pain, when we're in survival, when we're in a situation that we just want the problem to go away, we will make choices that are not going to leave us resourceful. We are going to make choices that might help in the very moment, they will not help us in the long term. And this is about uh, tuning yourself and attuning your brain so that you're making good decisions and finding good solutions that will serve you in the long term. So it's being patient with that, being okay with the ambiguity, giving it that pause, taking those three deep breaths that Joanna is talking about, recognizing that one idea isn't enough ideas. We need more than that. We need many ideas and we need to weigh them out and we still need to keep moving forward. So we'll go to the next slide. So the good news is you all, as much as you're hardwired for survival, you are also hardwired for creativity. We know through research coming out of the International Center for Studies in Creativity that each one of us has a universal creative process that we tap every time we have to get ourselves out of a challenge. And you know you're doing this right now. And I won't go into a ton of detail on this. There's a few things I want to you to take away. First off, there is a process of thinking you need to go through. Every one of us has a preference for engaging in this process. So some of us like to clarify the challenge. Some of us really love to generate ideas. Some of us like to take those ideas and turn them into a solution. And others of us just want to get things done and move into action very quickly. The reality is whatever your preferences are, the thinking you need right now is holistic. You need to be thinking through this entire process. You need to stop 
and think about what is the thinking I re need right now? Where am I in the process of solving this problem? Am I at a place where I even understand what the problem is? Do I need to gather up some information and sort things out and just make sure that I'm focused on the right problem or maybe it's the right opportunity? Am I at a place that now that I'm comfortable with that, I need to find ideas and as I said earlier, find many ideas and engage other people in helping you find those ideas because you're not the only one dealing with this problem. It's probably a problem that you're working with with your team and it's probably a problem that you're working with your family. As you figure out what those options are, find the best solutions, the best ways to combine those ideas into something that's going to work for you and that's going to change based on where you're at and what's happening. There's gonna be constantly new information. So what seemed like a good idea yesterday might not be as good of one. And maybe an idea that you tossed out suddenly becomes a little more feasible or a little more valuable to you so you can work with it that way. So I think the key here is be flexible and be willing to take in new information as you have and still keep moving forward as you start to move things into action. When you start getting into action, here's what's going to be really, really, really important. And I call this one of the best creative practices or innovation practices you can have. When you've done something, step back and look at what happened. How did it work? Mm. What's working? Good process. What should you do differently? What did you learn from this? Mm. Um, you know, what learnings can you apply next time? Okay, hey, phew, dodge that bullet, but crap, you know, we weren't thinking about this. We better be looking about that this time. This is the place where we need to be communicating. This is the place where we can really help ourselves build that resilience. If, if we're just running and doing, we cannot build the neurology or, or the resilience to be agile and to keep doing the flex. We're just going to be in survival mode. This is the difference from moving from survival to being able to thrive. I'm going to take to the next one. So, one of the, believe it or not, there's a, if I say the word mindfulness, you probably have a lot of different ways to anticipate what mindfulness <laughs> means. Right. And when we were looking for an image to communicate this, all of them were about, you know, sitting on a yoga cushion or, a, mm -hmm. you know, a med meditation. It's not that. This is about attending to thoughts, feelings, sensations in the relative, or the, you know, in, in your present situation. This is about what's going on inside of you as you're navigating through that universal creative process. What are you noticing about yourself? What is happening with your emotional state? What sort of information are you feeling? What's your intuition telling you about what you need to be paying attention to? We've got to bring out all of these data sources. It's not just the data sources outside of us. It's the data sources inside of us too. We need to be tapping that. And mindfulness is one of the critical essential skills in a creative problem solving tool set that we teach. You and cannot, that, yeah, sorry, Joanna. I'm sorry, I think that's such a wonderful reframe because most of us, when we think of mindfulness, we do think of the sitting on the cushion kind of thing. No, this is active. Right. You cannot make good decisions about what you need to do next mm -hmm. if you are not paying attention to what's going on right now. It's as simple as that. Absolutely true, absolutely true. And so. There's the range of emotions. I think I'm going to turn it over to you now, Joanna. Yeah, there's such a wide range. And that's the cool thing about this. It's just not just about happiness. It's about all the different positive emotions that you could be feeling. When you're mindful, you're going to notice these. When you stop and you slow down, you're going to notice all of these different shades of happiness. Such a wide range of positive emotions for us to tap into right now. One thing that we need to remember is that those emotions are contagious. And very often they travel along the electromagnetic field of the body. Now what we know about the electromagnetic field of the body is that the electromagnetic field of the heart is the strongest field in the body. 5,000 times more powerful than the electronic, than the electromagnetic magnetic field in the brain. So if you're really looking for those creative solutions, it's about stopping. Here we are again, put your hand on your heart. Breathe deeply into a sense of appreciation and then ask some of those questions. What's possible? What else is possible? What can I do here? And you're going to get a whole lot of different answers. But that electromagnetic field of the body also sends a signal to other people. And if you are a leader, and it doesn't matter if you're a leader in an organization, in a community, in a family, or just a leader in your own life, 
pay attention to what you're broadcasting. Are you broadcasting that smooth sine wave, that beautiful feeling of peace? Or are you broadcasting that jittery, uh, anxious kind of feeling? So check what you're broadcasting. Check your state before walking into your workplace or your home or these days into the other room. If you've been working in one room and you're walking into another room and there are people there, what are you thinking about? Is it positive or negative, optimistic or pessimistic? Is it energy gaining or energy draining? Because you're broadcasting those emotions to other people and you always have the option of turning the dial to a more uplifting, optimistic channel. There's that vibe of appreciation again. Here's the sticky thing about negative emotions versus positive emotions. Because negative emotions have to do with survival. They, uh, they stick. They're a lot like Velcro. Once a negative emotion is there, it's really hard to make it go away because it's designed to stick in our brain in a number of different places. A positive emotion, on the other hand, slides right off as if it is Teflon, which is why we need more positive emotions than negative emotions because positive emotions don't last the same way. Dr. Barbara Fredrickson at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill came up with what she calls the tipping point. It's the ratio of positivity to negativity where we cross the line between languishing and flourishing. So as you are now learning new practices, you might want to start paying attention to, do you have that three to one tipping point? That's just the tipping point. And do you have a five to one ratio? That's the happy marriage ratio, five, to, five times more positivity than negativity. A good thing to practice while we're all at home. One of the things that I talk about is the 20 second rule. You have to hold on to a positive thought for 20 seconds before it actually becomes a positive experience for your body and give you, give you all the advantages of the chemicals. So think about when you think a positive thought, it's a beautiful day today, take it a little deeper. The sky is blue, the trees are, I'm in Southern Florida, the trees are green, it's, it's warm. And, I'm sorry, Janice. Oh, I'm, shut up. <laughs> Janice, is, Janice has been getting on our calls, and she's got a sweater on and a turtleneck, and I've been getting on the call. <laughs> she's complaining about the air conditioning, and I'm yeah, going, I'm glad the heat's still on. <laughs> it's all relative. How relative it is. But stick with that positive emotion. Stick with that positive emotion for at least 20 seconds so that it becomes a positive experience. And at the end of your day, take a few moments and reflect on it. Choose three good things that happened that day and why, and write them down. More than 2 million people are doing this as an evidence-based exercises, and we know within two weeks, it's going to make you happier. Love that one. Okay, so, so I'm going to move yeah, over to that. I think, I think we'll alternate these. Why don't you start with this one, and then I'll take the next one, and then we, we'll tie up that way. How's that? Right, and we're so, I'm, I'm just watching the time, I so know, we, we're, we're close there. <laughs> um, so first one, be aware and be in choice. So the idea behind these seven Beatitudes is we're really attempting to summarize uh, what Joanne has been talking about, some of the things that I've been talking about in a quick takeaway. Um, so, you know, we got we to gotta be aware of that gator brain and keep ourselves from being hijacked. I've been practicing getting over gator brain for 17 years. I'm human. You are too. This is how we're hardwired. The choice is, can you choose creativity? Can you put some things into perspective and can you make that shift to optimism? And that is a daily and or moment by moment effort. Moment by moment. <laughs> okay. It's moment by moment. All right. So fear will motivate you, but it will also make you sick. Positivity and being creative is going to keep your immune system boosted. It's going to feed that body. It's going to feed your neurology and it's going to keep you in a much resourceful state. And be vigilant to this. So pay attention to where that attention is going. Pay attention to your attention because where attention goes, energy is going to flow. And that's what we want. We want to get that, that energy flowing in the area of creativity. And self-correct, as Jenna said, I think it's about every 10 seconds, actually. <laughs> I think you and I are in this. I, I call myself a recovering pessimist because of that. <laughs> All right. Next one. Be intentional and accountable. Um, the whole concept is if you're setting intentions of what you'd like to do, uh, how you'd like to be, 
it's more likely that you're going to give yourself a baseline to check against. So if you're saying, hey, I'm going to do a gratitude practice and do one of these positivity practices, and you notice at the end of the day you haven't done it, okay, so what are you going to do to do it tomorrow? And things change. The point is, do you have the intention and are you taking steps forward to make it happen? Another thing you can do here, we're talking about, you know, maybe there's a way to involve some other people in having some of these practices together, because as we lift ourselves and we lift each other, we're going to lift our communities and we're going to lift our countries and we're going to lift our world. I love that. I love that so much. And I think we will. I think that's what a lot of this is about. There, there's an underlying something going on here and it is about human connection and compassion and love and how can we how can we raise the boat for everyone and be truthful tell the truth about what you need if you need help ask for help this is not this is not a time to try to rough it through all by yourself so if you're if you are feeling overwhelmed if you are feeling a little depressed if you are feeling anxious it's okay to talk about it it's okay to find help. It's okay to get a group of people together. I noticed that in my group, people are starting to put together meetings on Zoom just to get together like a virtual cocktail hour to have conversations and conversations that are running a little bit deeper these days than the cocktail version. So ask for help if you need it. We're both here to help you. The next one is be asset focused. Um, I think that the, the whole concept here is when we're in a state of concern and we are not quite sure where things are going to go and we're all looking at finances and other things, I think the reality is there's much, much more that we can be focused on. So what do we have? Where is the good? You know, if we focus on what's thriving, we have a much better opportunity to create more of that. Um, you know, this is going back to what I had said about doing some sort of an, a, a, a practice, a, a learning type practice where you're checking in on what have you been doing, what's working well, what's really good. It's where can we find the light to shine? One of the things that I've been doing is looking purposely for great stories of people being creative. You know, I don't want to be looking at the news all the time. I want to look at people's resilience. I want to look at how people are rising to the occasion. And those are the sorts of things that I want to be sharing in my network. Not that I want to avoid that other stuff. It's it's just that we really need to be focused on what's good because as Joanna had said before, our thoughts create our reality. So the more we're focused on what's good, the more we're focused on the assets we have and looking at new and different ways of using those, the more we're going to be able to get through this in a good positive way that's boosting our immune system. Next one. Yeah. That's the, I have been noticing, uh, talk about shining the light on what is right. Certain of my, certain colleagues are now posting what their clients are doing. And I am seeing some of the most creative stuff, stuff we couldn't even imagine. So it's a, it's a wonderful practice and be grateful. You know, are you warm and safe right now? Or, or are you cool and safe right now? Depending on where you are, what can you appreciate? If you don't have a gratitude journal, get a gratitude journal, get your kids involved in this, put it up on the wall. It's so important to be grateful. And I think everybody here appreciates that as our poll showed in the beginning. Be kind and giving. This is the time to be generous. Um, it's so funny. I'll just tell briefly the story. Joanna and I came together at the referral of a, a, a colleague and then we started talking about our shared experience and then we realized that we had something to offer our clients and we decided to do this and it just felt like the right thing to do but i've heard many stories of people who are reevaluating how do they continue to deliver their businesses and the ways they need to do it and i'm hearing of people who are saying well let's forget about worrying about this or that or that you've got this and i've got this piece and this guy has this piece and we all know this other person that we trust so why don't the three of us get together and create something that's going to help all of us and that will help the people in our community. And I think that's the way we need to be looking at things. There's lots of ways we can come together. There's lots of ways we can be kind and giving. I had a colleague who was telling me that when she was out walking in the neighborhood, she realized that nobody was smiling. And I went, well, what are you doing? And she goes, I'm going to just start trying to smile to people. I know we have to keep our distance. I'm going to try to smile to people when I walk by them. And you know what? That makes a big difference because we're all out there on our own in some aspects and trying to figure out and navigate this way of, you know, social distancing and everything else. But sometimes just a smile to somebody else on the street 
You don't even have to say anything can go a heck of a lot, long way to being kind and giving. And I don't know who, re who came up with that word social distancing. I think it's physical distancing we need, but we can still be social. Yeah. And so much of what, so much of what we feel shows up on our face. So before we, we have some gifts for you, but before we do that, we have a couple of people with questions. Whoops. Yeah. Let's take a peek here at what we've got. Okay. Uh, when you are done, and it was great, could you please do a survey to ask where the participants are from? Hey, folks, let's do that right now. In the chat, would you please identify? Go to the chat and identify where you're from. How about giving us the city as well as giving us your country? case there's a couple of things and in the meantime i'm doing this little housekeeping right here okay and then so we've got everybody doing that thank you that was something that i thought would be good uh uh our smile i have a comment from uh cassandra spencer online our smile is our best asset during these challenging times i think you are absolutely correct in that joanna uh, I've got another one. Who who else is there? Do I have another question, Laura? Did I miss a question? Or are we good? No, you're you're good. People are just okay. commenting about where they're from. Also in the cool Q and A box. So, so we've got lots of USA. So have we seen anybody? Has anybody seen anybody outside of the U.S. or Canada? Yeah, the UK. Stuart. Yay! I think we had a number of people in from the UK. I saw. We were quite surprised at the at the. Uh, response that we had to this. I've, I've heard from a couple of people going, I can't get in. Uh, so uh, we are putting this out. Uh, we'll put this up on YouTube and make it available. Um, it, it appears that there were some issues with people getting in. I see some of you out there. I'm getting, giving, giving those of you that I already know and you know who you are, I'm giving you a big hug. There's my virtual hug for you. I think there's a bunch of people out there that Joanna knows too. And here, Joanna, let's just get together and give everybody a big hug. Everybody yeah. just reach so out to your computer and send some hug energy because I don't know about you guys. I live alone. I am missing hugs. I am so missing hugs. <laughs> Hugging is part of our corporate culture and it's part of my life and I am missing that significantly. Okay. Um, are we good there? When I do see them and we have this, we have a virtual hug thing in person, you know, about that far apart. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Yeah, let's move on. All right. Thanks, folks, for sharing. And thank you to the gentleman who said, hey, where's everybody from? I hope that helped answer your question. All right. Hey, we've got some gifts for you. We started looking at a couple of things that we could do. And we, uh, there's a couple of things happening. So Joanna has a fantastic special report. It's called uh, 21 Positivity Practices to Overcome Negativity and Create a Happier and Healthier Life. The fact is, if you like these positivity practices that she's already shared and the energy that she's done to do this, there's a whole lot more that she can offer with that. Yeah, and that's on a landing page, returnonhappiness.com slash positive doing, because that's going to take you from positive thinking to positive doing. Which is also good. Uh, second thing, I'm going to show you a couple of thinking tools that have helped me uh, in some of the research that I've been doing around uh, bringing more of a holistic aspect into our creative problem solving practice. So things that you can do to tap uh, not just your logical brain, uh, but the, the emotional and the uh, intuitive aspects of what you're doing. Um, I'm just going to show you really briefly, Joanna, did they come up? Yes. Yeah, uh, I have it. This is the positive doing and there we are. Okay, so I've got these, we've got these available for you on a download. They are yours to use. Um, don't try to look at this here. The basic is this. It's a tool that if you're sitting, clearing through the fog is a tool where you're sitting there going, oh man, I can't even tease through. There's, you know, you're in overwhelm. You can't tease through what it is you need to do. You're looking for a way out. You've got to make sense of the emotions that you're awash in. Uh, this is something we've been using with leaders and, and with people in our community for a while. This tool alone has gotten me through a lot of tough times sitting at my kitchen table or the kitchen island going, all right, what do I need to do? So if you find it helpful, it's just a few questions to trigger and just, just help you move out of that space and you just follow that around. There's instructions on how to do it. And the I next, sorry, Joanna. I love that tool. I uh, absolutely love that tool. Yeah. 
I so, tell you, it got me out of some bad places. All right. Second thing, facts, feelings, and hunches. You know, when we are in survival mode, we tend to go to logic. We tend to stay in logic. That is not where we need to be right now. We need to be working from our heart. We need to be working from our intuition. And what this tool does is it allows you to kind of, it triggers some questions so that you can just organize your thinking around, well, what are the facts that I know? How am I feeling? What are some of the hunches I have about this? And then we've even got a little place for what are all the questions that I feel I have to answer? And we are a big fan of post-it notes. If you haven't had post-it notes delivered to your home office or your house right now, please go get post-it notes. I own no stock in post-it. I should, but because we use a lot, but we, we use a lot of stuff where we take these and we use little tiny post-its and we use big ones and we stick it up on the wall. You know, the fact is we've really got to get perspective here. And what I find is you get much better perspective when you can put something down in front of you and you can put something up on a wall. Don't keep doing all your work in a computer, right? That's too logical and technical. Bring it out so that you can feel it, okay? Um, so we'll give you those and we can move on to the next thing, Janice, Joanne. Excuse me, Janice. We yeah. have a question. Yes. Um, how do people here access those tools and can they share them with others? Yes. So, um, both Joanna and I have some landing pages that will allow you to download those tools. So Joanna's giving you that, and I've got one set up. Uh, we will send all of the participants, as well as everyone who was registered, a link later today. We're going to send out an email. We'll get it out as soon as we can. It'll give you links to a number of different resources. We've got an entire page each of things where you might want to read this. You may want to read this. Here's another free webinar. Here's a, here's a paid webinar. Here's a whatever. So we have that and we will get these down to you uh, right away. Um, I'm just wondering, Joanna, can you uh, copy and paste your URL and put it into the chat? And I'm going to go and grab mine also in case people want to get these tools right away. Um, I'll, I'll, get my, uh, I'll get the landing page URL also okay. and give that to people. So what, guys, why don't we we'll, we'll do that for you? Does that help to answer the question? But we will send out some additional information. Uh, lots of free resources for you um, to look at your positivity and creativity practice if you want. Does I that answer the question? I what? think the other part of the question was, can they share it with other people? And I'm going to say, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, we are. So here's the thing, folks. These, this is all copyrighted information. Please, a lot, please respect the source. Please respect the copyright. We're giving you permission to use this. Please do. Use it in your own practice. If you, you know, so please use it in your practice. That's, that's our gift to you. Many of you are already our customers. Many of you might eventually be our customers. Many of you are our friends. Please use it. We've got stuff that we think can help. And that was the entire uh, reason that we did this. Anything else? Any other questions? Yeah. Nope. OK. okay. Joanna, right. why don't you move to wrap? And I'll just find that uh, Why don't you talk about your book, and I'll talk about okay. mine. And then we'll, we'll see what sure. comes so, one of the things that we'll give you a link to is a book. Um, <laughs> you know, I talked about the fact that you need many, many ideas. One idea, two ideas, you're not giving yourself enough choices and you cannot create solutions that are going to work for you in the long term. One of my colleagues, Michael Cobrin, who is a very accomplished photographer and I did a collaboration uh, about 18 months ago, almost two years ago, and this is the fruition of it. It was a book that we wanted to have available for our clients when we were doing creative problem solving sessions with them and to give them inspiring things on ways to have new ideas. And so this is a way to use visual images that are just gorgeous from Michael's collection uh, to help stimulate some of that thinking. There's instructions in there on how to extend the ideas that you're getting and uh, help with that. Where can we find that, Janice? I'll put it. In the uh, I'll I'll put it on. There is a there is a landing page for that. I'll get it. Uh, I'll make sure that everybody has access to that later. And my book is uh, my fifty four ways to stay positive in a changing, challenging, and sometimes negative world. It's a delightfully illustrated book. It's a very light touch, uh, but pretty comprehensive. And you can find that at all online booksellers. Come on. Oh, and there we are. This is how you can get a hold of us, folks, um, if you want to. 
Uh, one of the things we do as an organization is we do make consultation calls available to anybody who is wanting to make a uh, book time with us. Um, you know, so if you need to talk, you want to ask something about some of the things we're talking about. Hey, we've got some time on our hands. We're happy to talk with you. And <laughs> sort it through. All we ask is that you, you know, book the time so that, you know, we can still do our positivity practice and get outside occasionally and take advantage of all the new ways that we can spend our time. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And all this information will come afterwards. And I think the, the best way to close this is to simply say, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And Janice, I want to say thank you so much for jumping on board and for wanting to be part of this glass half full webinar. Uh, you added such a, an amazing dimension to it. I loved every minute of it. I know we were rushing. We had so much. Uh, Janice and I are very similar in that we were so anxious to give you information. I know I was talking so fast trying to make this time. And I know how people are uh, using their time right now very well. And we are at 12 o'clock on the dot. So with our questions, we got we got right in there at one hour, despite the, despite the technical stuff in the beginning. That's right. Hey, thank you very much for joining us and for the support that you've given us over the years. If you're already clients, thank you to all of our friends for keeping our emotional uh, positivity up and being there when we've reached out. And we hope we can do the same thing for you. Uh, we're all in this together. It's going to be quite an experience and quite a learning. I think we're going to all find creativity that we've never had. And I wish all of you the best. And the greeting that I much prefer these days is namaste. Namaste. The light me recognizes the light within you and you and you and you and everybody out there. So shine a light on what is right and let's use this time well. Thank, Thank you, you, Joanna. Thank you. Thank you, Laura.